And welcome back, friends, to today's episode of Everyday Truths. Uh, we're in First John, as you know, and we are. We actually started uh, verse number two last episode, but we want to jump back into it because there's just so much a uh, truth here that affects uh, our lives and. Uh, our theology, and I just want to make sure that we're understanding it in its context. So if you'd look again at 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2, uh, where the Bible says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. So let's just take each one of these clauses separately. So the Bible says, now are we the sons of God. So when we invest our faith in Jesus Christ, we become ch the children of God. And you can't be unborn. You know, once you're saved, you're saved. And John is offering a statement of reassurance here to say, now are ye the sons of God. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So that's, uh, that's John chapter 1. So uh, John is reiterating that here in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. But then, John, I want you to speak to this. Because then it says, it doth not yet appear what we shall be. So John said, hey, we don't know everything. Yeah, we, we know what we know, but there's things about our future, things about our future state, things about heaven, things about our glorified body that we just don't really know yet. I think Paul talked about that in 1 Corinthians 13. So what, what, what is that? You know, obviously God gives us all we need in his word to live today for Christ Jesus, to live the life that we need to live to honor and glorify him. There are a lot of things that people wish they knew. You know, they wish they knew the eternal state. Hey, what's, what's it all going to be like? You know, how, how are things going to work out then? Oh, what will we look like exactly? You know, and, and I've heard all kinds of theories from people over in my life. Though we're going to look like this or look like this. How old will we be? How, yeah, be, we're all going to be 33 years old. I've heard people say that before, you know. I have no idea what we're going to be like exactly. Because John just says that here. We don't yet know what we're going to be like exactly. And the truth is, we don't have to know that. We don't have to have all the details of everything that's going to be like in the future in order to live for God today. And that's what John wants us to understand is, hey, we do know this. We know that we're the sons and daughters of God. Mm -hmm. We may not know what the future is, but we do know what's in his hands and we know we can trust him with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm smiling because you're talking about you know, all the questions you get about heaven and what's it going to be like, as if there's some kind of a pastoral clairvoyance. You know, people <laughs> ask me questions like, you know, Pastor, will my dog be in heaven? And my answer, of course, is yes. Yes, dogs do go to heaven. Now, your cat, I'm not, <laughs> not, not quite sure. But no, the point is, just as you said, yeah, we don't know all but here's what we do know. We know that we are the children of God, and we know that God has a plan for us to come to full maturity. And the, the purpose of verse 2 is to reiterate that. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. So we know that. We know that we belong to him. He belongs to us. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. We don't know what our future is. And think about that. That's even true in our physical lives. Okay, so you look at... Uh, a baby and you hold a little baby that you bring home to the hospital and what do you know you know that this is your child and you love this child now what will that child be will he be a doctor will he be a lawyer uh will he have will he have facial hair will he be six foot four will he be five foot two we don't know we don't yet we don't yet know we but we know that he's going to grow and we know that he's going to be something that he's not we don't know all of what that will be but we do know that the loving father is going to guide that entire process that's the point so we we it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know here's what we do know we know that when he Christ shall appear and when the bible says that Christ shall appear that, that's a strong a theological point. So when, when I say that to you, John, Christ shall appear. To, to what event is that a reference? You know, we have the second coming when Christ is going to come in the flesh. Christ is going to come at the, you know, obviously the rapture, we're all going to be raptured up to him. He's not going to appear, you know, on this earth where people will see him. But Christ is going to appear at the second coming 
to you know bring all the people with him and he's going to appear bodily it's not just going to be you know some christ is not, is not just a you know just a disembodied spirit no christ has his glorified body his resurrection body and someday we are going to see him in the flesh as he truly is so my understanding john correct me if i'm wrong was that we are changed at the rapture right yes so first corinthians 15 uh first thessalonians chapter 4 when Christ comes in the clouds, we meet the Lord in the air. So we see him at his appearing. Right. Then the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And when we see him, the culmination of our salvation will take place. And that is just like those dead saints, those that have died in Christ will be made into, they'll, they'll receive their glorified body. Now, how are they existing in heaven right now? That's a big theological question. Uh, some people talk about soul, body. We know they're with the Lord because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But there becomes a re there comes a reunion that we have with our body. For those that have died, their body's in the ground, right? Or even has been cremated. But God will reunite the soul, the saved soul with the body, and that body will be make, made like unto the, the body of Christ. That doesn't mean that, that we all become Christ clones. That doesn't mean in heaven that everybody looks the exact same. We all look exactly like Christ, had the same facial features. No, we retain our individuality. We retain our, I think, even some of our personality traits. But the point is that we have a glorified body. And, and Jesus gave us a little sneak peek of that. Uh, in Matthew 17. You're exactly right, Pastor. And you're right. That at the rapture, all of us, the dead in Christ, are going to rise first. And we which are alive and remain will be caught with him in the air. So you're exactly right. That is whenever we, as the church age today, when we will be turned into, you know, we will be turned into be like Christ, our glorified body, our resurrected body. And so, yeah, I don't want to mislead people. So you're exactly right what you're saying about that. And that is going to be a great time whenever we will have a body that will no longer suffer. Um and that's going to be great for sure, but it's also going to be great that we're going to see him face to face and we're going to be like him. No more problem with sin, no more sorrow. It's going to be great to see Jesus Christ face to face and be with him. Amen. Amen. So there's there's a theological component to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. We're the sons of God. Uh, we don't know exactly what we're going to be in heaven or what heaven's going to be like, or we don't know everything about what happens beyond this life, but we know this. We know that Christ is coming again. Uh, we know that we're going to appear before him. He's going to appear and we're going to stand before him. We're going to become like him. That's not something we can do. You can't make yourself into a glorified body. You can't fashion. No, God's going to do that. And by the way, God's done every part of your salvation. He, he saved you. He justified you. He is saving you today, making you more like Jesus. And one day, even your body will be glorified like unto his glorified body. So that's a wonderful truth. That, that's a wonderful piece of information that, that helps me and gives me confidence today that, wow, you know, God saves all of me. But what should that truth compel me to do? That's the big question, and that's where we are in verse number three. And every man that hath this hope, what hope? Well, first of all, the word hope means confidence. Every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. So in other words, if, if we know that God's purpose for our life is Christ-likeness, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. You know, predestination is that thought that God has made it a sure thing that all believers in Christ will one day be just like Christ. So if that be the, the case, then ought we not to cooperate with the, with the plan of God? It's like if I tell, tell my, my three-year-old child, 
you know, we're going to go to the dentist. I don't want to go to the dentist. No, we're going to go to the, you need to go to the dentist as part of your, you need to get that cavity filled. I don't want to go to the dentist. Now, I'm going to take that child into the dentist, whether he wants to go or not. You know, now the process might not be enjoyable for him if he drags his feet or if he yells and screams or if I have to pull him kicking and screaming. But the point is, I'm going to bring him to the place where he's going to get that help. You know, God is in the process of sanctifying us and we can go kicking and screaming and not enjoy that process and not not experience all that God wants us to experience in this process of victory. But either way, believers are led by and led along by God to the place of complete perfection. You know, and here I love what John does. He gives us the future hope. This is this is what we know beyond doubt is going to happen. You know, but prophecy is not just given to us so that we can know details about the future. Prophecy is given to us so we can know that God is in charge and what God says will come to pass and to cause us today to live in light of what is going to be true someday. And so John in verse 2 has told us about what we're going to be like. We're going to be like Christ. And now that we know that for sure, we have that confident expectation. Today, we are going to live a life that honors and glorifies him because we know who our Savior is. We have our confidence that our faith is secure in him. And because all these things are true, today we want to live a life that honors and glorifies him. We want to live a life today that looks forward to our future someday and live a life today as a child of God who honors God. It's two purposes of knowing the future. So there are things about our future that God says you don't know. There's things about your future that God says, here's what I want you to know. And there are two qualities in believers uh, about our future that we that 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 we ought to have because God tells us these things. Number one, confidence. We ought to have confidence. We know the end of the book. We know what God's going to do. So we can have confidence in him. Our hope, that's the implication of the word hope. But then purity. You know, as we live for as we think about the fact that this world is going to pass away, as we think about the fact that we're going to stand before Jesus one day, as we think about the fact that God has this great grand purpose for our life and we're captured by the love of God, all of these factors ought to incentivize us to live lives of purity, of righteousness, of, of, of holiness to the Lord. So confidence and holiness. I wonder, are, are these qualities prevalent in your life? You know, do you desire to live a life of purity and holiness before God? And do you live a life of boldness? Not so much concerned about what other people think or what the, how the world characterizes you, because you know that you know Jesus is coming again. Uh, these are great indicators uh, of, of what true faith looks like. That They sure are, Pastor. How, how we live today based upon the future and our confidence in Christ, our purity, are great indicators of where we are at in our spiritual maturation and can even be indicators of, re of whether we really even know Christ our Savior. You saw back in 1 John 2 that those who went away from us were, were really not part of the Church of Jesus Christ. But the church of Jesus Christ, those who know him and trust him, are to follow him and be faithful in doing so. Yeah, for sure. So think about your future. You know, what will it be like in heaven? Don't know. Will I be able to hit a hole in one when I golf? I, I hope so. Uh, will, I, will there be dogs and cats? Maybe. But one thing we do know. We know that we're going to be like Jesus. And because we know that, Hey, let's, let's allow God to do his work in our life today. Let's be captured by God's love today. Let's have confidence in living for him today, even though we're misunderstood by the world around us. It'll help you. So I hope that helps today. We're going to jump into verse number four uh, next episode. And so I hope you'll join us. God bless you today, my friends.